some people may be facing the hard times right now. And um, some people are most definitely facing hard times right now. A lot of people are facing hard times and they know the hard times are coming. But what do you do about the people who thinks that, that that's all make-believe and that it won't happen? Good morning. Hello, Apple Brooks, honey. What do you do about the people who think that will not happen? That there's there's always been hard times in our life. Well, that's true. But in your lifetime, in my lifetime right now, I've faced hard times. You know, I've had to struggle. You know, in the younger years when you grow up and your family don't have much and then you get married and it's hard to make ends meet uh, when you first get married and things like that. But are there hard times coming ahead even at this period of time in our lives? Yes, there are, and there are people who are experiencing it. And um, there's all types of information out there telling you that, uh, more or less, you got some hard times coming. The road's going to be a little bit rough, so you better buckle up your seatbelt because you're in for a really, really bumpy ride. And I, I think it's true. It is true in lots of um, areas of our life. If, if you're having to go to the store and buy anything, you know your money don't go as far as it used to. You can't get what you used to with your money. Uh, and your utility bills are going up. And certain foods are missing off the shelf. And um, jobs, jobs are hard to come by. They are, even though, you know, they raise the minimum wage. You're up to around $16, $18, $19 uh, for jobs that, you know, that used to be really good money for people who had a skill set um, in certain jobs. But now you can, like, go into a fast food restaurant or some home improvement store and stuff like that. You get paid that much money because... It Inflation is so high, and um, they say there is a wor worker shortage, um, and there'll continue to be a worker shortage, but then, you know, that fits right in. It's, it fits right in, and no offense to the robots. It fits right in to move in the robots to do those jobs that humans just don't want to do because there's a human labor shortage. Um, and you know that they've been planning this. They have. You all, I'm just going to be honest with you. You know it. They've been planning it. They've said it. They've said it. They've said it. Um, hello, Susan B. Honey, you all. So, um, will we face hard times? Absolutely. And um, people are already struggling. And um, they're tr trying to figure out how they go forward from here. And you may think, well, I don't see how it can get any worse than it already is. I've about lost everything that I have. Um, I don't even have enough money to go to the store to buy food for my family. I can't even pay the the rent on my house, the mortgage. I can't afford the utilities. Um, I'm going to have to do without. Um, it, it can get a lot harder. It can. Um, a lot of people during very, very, very hard times, you know, they're, they're forced to stand in bread lines. Bread lines, food lines, and you're forced to get the government to feed you, give you government food too, you all. This is not a joke, the, the time that we're living in. It's not. You lost everything of it. That's right. When it comes right down to it, right inside of here. But a lot of people don't have the, have that connection that provides them the strength to see the world through spiritual eyes. Uh, and that makes them anxious. It makes them worry. Um, there are some, and there was, um, back in days of old, they realized as long as they had each other, that's all that matters. They'll make it no matter what comes their way. Sure, they may not have three meals a day on the table. They may only have one meal, and it might be a very, very, very small meal. Um, and, you know, like the family that eats together, the family that prays together, the family stays together. Um, we, we need to form tighter bonds with our family. 
and uh, our friends, even though we're living in a day and age where we see those bonds, literally something has crept in and literally broken the bonds, broken those um, chains that hold us together. Something came in. It was the darkness. It came in and it, it severed that. Um, there is hope though. There is hope that in the days ahead, when the times do get really hard, that those like broken relationships, uh, they'll be put back together. There is hope in that you all, because when hard times fall, it often wakes people up. It does, it wakes people up and they have a reality check and thinking, now wait a minute, I gotta go. I can't live like this. I need, I need my family. I need my friends. I need that family that I pushed away, or I need my friends that I pushed away. I need them. Um, see, that that right there is hope because some people are going to wake up and they're going to realize what they're facing, and they're going to realize if, if they pushed you away or you pushed them away, they're going to realize, no, they can't continue like that. They got to have somebody there with them somebody to lean on you all. That's where you come into play. Your family's going to need somebody to lean on because there's a lot of people who are going to look back and they're going to say, oh my gosh, how am I going to make it? They were right or something like this. And they know that you were right. And they know that you got strength to go forward and they're going to come back to you. Okay. So it's not all, there's not, all uh, hope is not lost you all. It's not. There's going to be a lot of that instances. The big picture, the, the veil is literally going to go, and they're going to see things for the way that they are. For some, it may be too late, but, but for others, it's not going to be too late, you all. It's not going to be too late. And you may think, well, I have, I've lost my family. I've lost my friends. I've lost everyone. That's okay, because in the days ahead, uh, you may find that you really didn't lose them, lose them, because if if God gave them to you, and if they were put in your life, um, they're going to stay in your life. They're going to come back. They're going to realize, you know, it's like a, like that, uh, the one sheep that like wandered away, and then uh, the shepherd went and got it, brought it back. Yeah, yeah. You may have friends, you may have family that separate, and um, you know, if you look back on your life, you've had situations like that before come back into your life that's okay it's all right you all we're gonna make it when those hard times come because they're coming in they're gonna fill them they're feeling it it's all over the world you all the whole entire world is facing these hard times that are going to come and that are here and um they too no matter where you're at you're wondering you know am i going to have the strength to make it a lot of you are going to have the strength to make it and you know you are and you know that you'll do what it takes to make it there may be some who don't know, but they're going to turn to those who do know, okay? Yeah, humanity will pull together um, the bulk of it, and um, it might be hard for some. It might be hard for some to humble themselves, really. Humility is uh, something that a lot of people are lacking. They know. <laughs> they don't know what it's like to be humble, but they're going to find out, uh, really. They're going to find out. And it's okay because you know what? That humility, I think, is literally within. It's supposed to be in every single one of us when we're born. Okay, it's in there. It's uh, ingrained within it. It's woven into our DNA. This humility, this love, this compassion, and all of this stuff. Except if something else don't happen to you. If you don't belong to the you-know-what. That's all right, you are. But it literally is. It should be ingrained inside of each human being and they just forgot children children were like that they knew nothing completely innocent completely innocent um that's okay you all yeah we're gonna make it you all despite the hard times that are coming and they're coming i'm not i'm not going to say they're not i know they are i can look around you can look around you're seeing it um i did see um if you've been looking up on these food shortages and stuff, it's going to get worse. It is. They said down. 
this may sound strange, you all, but they said that people, if you, <laughs> for people who are menstruating, you can expect to have shortages because it's a paper product. That right there, and then the sugar, because um, some countries are converting that sugar into ethanol. And then the farmers, uh, since they fall under the EPA, they got to reduce their nitrogen. So, all of it. It's all like big old circle, you all. Salt, that's right, salt. I ran out of salt one time in Hawaii. Um, every Friday, we would have, we go to the commissary. We'd get maybe some tambawahi or mahi-mahi, like a tuna or salmon, and I'd, I'd fix some steamed rice and stuff. Uh, not that I salt my stuff like that, but there was other dishes that I would use salt in, and I ran out of my house. I didn't have any for some strange reason, and I thought, I will not have that happen to me again. So when I go to the store, I personally, when I go to the store, nine times out of ten, I will go and pick me up a canister of the iodized salt and even the plain salt. If, you, if you're going to ferment something, you need the plain salt. If you're going to ferment your cabbage into like, um, uh, what is that stuff? Kimchi or something. You want that plain salt so the bacteria can, you know, grow and stuff inside there. But you want the iodized salt too to keep out bacteria. So I do, I personally, it's only 54 cents you all. You can... I promise you, you got 54 cents, 54 cents. The next time you go to the store, 54 or 59, you pick you up some salt so you don't run out. That's one shelf stable food. Um, and anybody can afford that, really. I think anybody can because if you can, and let's think about this. If you smoke or you vape or you drink, you like to go out to eat, you can like maybe skip something, take that money and go buy you some food, uh, buy you something for the days ahead because they're going to get rough and um how rough it depends on the situation that you're in and um yeah and how you're going to handle it on the inside now this is really true you can have you can be prepared for the hard times when the hard times hit but if you ain't got it on the inside it's going to be really rough if you ain't um got yourself together and you're the one that like literally goes flies off the handle and can't handle your situation, even though you prepared for it, you're gonna exasperate the, the situation. You're gonna make it even harder for every single person around you. Don't be that person. Nobody wants to be around that person. You better learn to pull yourself together and just calm down, calm down. Okay, calm down. I, I saw this one video of this uh, one farmer Lady, she said, um, she's talking about people said they got the spouses who don't want them to store up nothing, don't want them to prepare. And they said, well, then you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you that's that's the situation. You People do have spouses. They think, you know, you don't need to. You're, you're, you're doing too much. That um, some meal, re I've never heard of a meal replacement tablet. Love Silf Pixie. What is a love replacement? A love. <laughs> a love replacement tablet. <laughs> Let's hope they don't got something like that. A love replacement tablet. But I think they do. They've got um, drugs that like do that, you all. <laughs> I, I, I don't have a wraparound porch. That's one thing my husband wanted. The, this port, this house is the way it was when we got it, except for the addition that we put on. I, I told him I can make a wraparound porch. I really could. I could make the porch wrap around, but you know, lumber and stuff is so expensive. I could, I could literally, I could like take this porch right here and I could wrap it around to where it connects to that one, but then I'll have to cut out for this right here. This was the addition where you see this thing that's where my log cabin ended right there. That's the addition we put on for my parents uh, before my dad passed. Um, so, uh, chocolate, they love food. I love it. When I'm stressed out, really stressed out, 
chocolate is a nice stress reliever. It is. It's wonderful. Somebody's getting themselves, getting their messages deleted because they're not being too nice. That's all right. Uh, we want a peaceful chat, you all. We really do, because this is serious what's going on. Um, no, um, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of people in this live stream who, you know, are pioneers and stuff, much more than me. Yeah, it's okay. Um, hello there in the Not Nottingham. Um, that's okay, you all. Now, what was it talking about? The hard times, you all, please. If you, if you smoke, uh, you might want to cut back on your smoking too because smoking is very expensive it's it is very expensive although i have read that um that is a some a good barter item when times get really rough to barter cigarettes for those who do and then like alcohol there's going to be an alcohol shortage i just read that too uh, you may not have the alcohol you want because there's going to be an alcohol shortage, and that's going to drive people up the wall, you all. It, <laughs> those people who like to drink, if you like to have that um, alcohol or something, and there's nothing wrong with it, you all, but if, could you imagine there's people who do drink every day uh, habitually, a little bit too much, and they'll tell you, yeah, I'm, a, I'm an alcoholic and stuff. Well, they may have an alcohol shortage moonshine um yeah that's right that's right you all <sighs> just get the salt <laughs> that's 50 50 some odd cents okay you can get some salt 50 or a dollar depending on where you go at least you'll have something to salt your food you'll have some flavor even if you have canned goods that are expired and it doesn't taste too salty because um everything has like degraded a little bit yeah um yeah that's right you are um grape wine well not everybody has an orchard or things like that to where they can make it so that's going to be very rare when we did live here well we we do live here when we first moved in there was old grape vines over there by the pond and um they were black they were um dark purple grapes and they got mildew and i would have to go and um you know sort through the grapes and i made some grape jelly and with a lot of it and then i made some grape juice i think i made grape juice or something and over the years <laughs> with that grape juice it did it fermented and it had like an alcoholic like um taste to it that's that, that's a hard job uh making grape jelly by the way um, the whole process and stuff yeah blackberry wine yeah there's not very many people have blackberry wine uh, i've had like a blackberry wine before and it tasted really good it did and I enjoyed every single bit of it. It came from Huber's, Huber's Orchard uh, from their blackberries there up there in Indiana. Uh, and it was really nice. Um, yes, we're going to keep going. Salt is good for antiseptic and all sorts. That's right. It keeps the meat. Yes, it does. And pickles. You can use some pickles. And um, to do your cucumbers, you have to have some salt and some vinegar. But then what happens when you can't get vinegar? Yeah. Um, and then if there's a, a, cannage, a shortage on the jars, canning supplies, and you know, they're cheaper now, they're cheaply made, they are. If you look at the canning, the canning uh, boxes, it says um, you can expect it to last only uh, 18 months, the seal. But a lot of the seals last a lot longer, but then I don't know, they could do something to it to where it won't last that long, you all. They could. Oh... The hard times are coming, you all. They're, they they are. And some people are going to be experiencing them. And I, I would not want to be in a place where it's going to get super, super cold. And um, the electricity bill is so high, I can't even afford to pay it. And then it's set and freeze. That's not nice. 
Yeah, it's not nice at all. And the food. But it's, it's all by design. Everything happens for a reason. I read a long time ago when I was in high school. Everything in politics, anything, it is carefully planned out. No matter what you see, it's carefully planned out ahead of time. Um, and there's a reason for everything, you all. Absolutely everything. You don't pay yours, so you invest it in blankets. Janie, Jan, Janie B., that's right. Um, that's very good. Wool blankets, wool blankets are good. You know, the old military kind, solid wood blank, wool blankets. You know, you can't find them in the stores anymore. I remember years ago, whenever I would go to the thrift store, I would, um, I would specifically look for the wool blankets because even when they're wet, they can keep you warm. And, um, uh, hello there. Yeah, they would keep you warm. And you want to have some warm blankets and, you know, socks too. Socks, blankets. And, um... You can look up ideas how to keep warm when it's really cold. You might wanna, you might wanna um, look up ideas like that right now. Just get an idea of what you would do because if the electricity went out and you couldn't think outside the box how to keep warm, you you might wanna have some ideas, especially if you have for children. You can like make a tent, put your tent on their bed, and put their sleeping bags in it. That way, their heat is controlled. Some people would um. Well, this is like in a nuclear fallout. Some people would take um, mattresses and stuff in their basement, if you could, and try to protect yourself from the fallout and things like that. Um, you bought warm tights for under jeans. That's wonderful. Um, yes, Alex, you are facing hard times right now. And a lot of people are doing it. I heard that, um, this is a theory, that the hard times, of course, they are starting in Europe first, and they will make their way to the West. They'll make their way straight to the West. That's the uh, United States area. Yeah. But, okay, you all, we'll, we'll make it as long as we're supposed to make it. And then that, as long as you do your best, and I know everyone will... Do your best to survive because nobody wants to die. They really don't. They want to stay alive and keep going as long as they can. As long as you do your best, that's all that's required. Do your best. Just don't be a slacker. When you know you can do better, do better. Okay, do better, you all. That's right. Storable food, Gina, Diane, honey. When I go to the store, I pick up a couple extra things. Um, when I go, I do. So, over time, that's how you build up a storage. Just a little here, a little there. But then, you know, you have all the different areas that you want to pick up something in. Is what you do. One time, um, I had a lot of storage uh, of food. And um, I, took, I took it to the homeless shelter. Um, I asked them, are, will they take some food? And they said, yeah. I said, well, I've got a lot of storage food. And I said, it's going to take a truck. I was going to take just a truck load, but I needed to get my trailer load. I said, I don't have anybody to help me uh, to bring the food because it was it was getting ready to go bad. So um, they sent me four men, four men from the homeless shelter came with me. And I loaded up that trailer with practically... It was like 80% or 90% of all the storage that I had. It was a lot, you all. It was a lot. I had a lot of canning stuff, too. A canning a jams and stuff that I had done and buckets of flour and stuff like that. I mean, this is over the years. I literally, a little by little, and it would add up. And you know that that homeless shelter, I had a lot of coffee stored up, too. And, you know, it don't last so long. 
And he said, you know, we were on our last can of coffee for the homeless people. Uh, <laughs> it was so funny. They, they could not believe it, but I, I did, you all. My basement was a perfect place. Um, we, we, came, we came and got one trailer full, went down there and took it to the homeless shelter. We came back and got another trailer full. I said, do you got room for all of this stuff? Uh, they were having to stick it under the tables, the tables, their kitchen. They had nothing. They were so low on food. And they said, what we don't use, we will share with the other shelters, you all. That was really exciting. It really was. I loved it. I did love it. Um, yeah, it went to those in need. So really, even if you store up a little too much, and um, even if it's nearing its end of expiration, there's somebody who, or a lot of somebodies, who will greatly be appreciative of the food you have that you give them. It is. That's right, you all. That's right. Uh, and none of it went to waste. And I remember stacking the stuff up. The guys were carrying in the cans of the, the cases of preserves that I did. I had peach preserves, apple butter. Um, all this kind of stuff. And they said, oh my gosh, we haven't had um, canned um, jelly and stuff like that since we were a kid. Oh, they were so happy because there were like, like little pint jars and some like, well, there was some stuff in big quart jars, but tons of jelly and jam and stuff. They were so, so thankful. So they, they, got, a, they got a really good treat. I even had... Um, the baking powder and big bags and stuff, you all. I was prepared for the apocalypse. I was prepared for the apocalypse. That didn't happen. But that that food did not go to waste at all. Even like the time, like when I said in a previous video, when I lived at, um, on Fort Meade in Maryland, the commissary, when they would have truckload sales of cases of food, the truckers um, would sell cases and cases of like um, cereal and uh, breakfast bars and stuff for seven dollars. That's when the cereal boxes were really, really big. And um, I just uh, would buy them for seven dollars. And when my parents would come, they fell on hard times. And I had I would store up food too. Every time I go to the store, I'd load their car up, uh, and they had food to eat. Uh, one time I gave them so much tuna that I had, I would pick up, my mother to this day does not like tuna. Um, yeah, she does not like it, you all. That was like around, um, how many years ago was that? Uh, around the, probably around 25 years, 20 years, 25 years ago or something, you all. Yeah, that's a long time. And I'm 50-something. I think it was that long ago. Maybe not that long. But yeah, probably something like that. Yeah, it never goes to waste. Your excess will supply those who uh, don't have. It's like, he who gathered little did not have too little. And he who gathered much did not have too much. Whatever it is that you gather, it will be enough. As long as you have, you know, those who um, are willing to share, and those who you can give to. It, nothing will go to waste, you all. Nothing. And that's good. It's like, give and it shall be given to you. It, it, that's true, too, you all. That's true. Um, um, somebody says, and never mind. Yeah. Somebody's saying, uh, don't listen to fear. Cheryl, honey, who you talking to? Don't listen to fear. Mm. Uh, some very judgmental people. Blue name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have you have told so many people. Um, yeah. Oh. That's okay, you know, um, when you do videos like this or any video, people are going to have a various opinions. They are various opinions, and they're going to come from certain 
you know, maybe a different place on the inside than you were at. And it's okay. It is, as long as nobody is really out, outright disrespectful and stuff like that. Because we all have different points of views in life. Sometimes, you know, a lot of people have the same point of view. Some people don't. They'll vary a little at all. That's right. That's okay. Um, there's millions of people in England crying. Oh, I'm sure their heart is broke, really. I am. And uh, it's sad. It's sad to see anybody, you know, hurt. It is. Um, yeah, somebody just got themselves in a lot of trouble. That's okay, you all. You got to be kind and respectful. You really do. That's right. Um, so, you all, we're going to face hard times. We are. Some people are already facing hard times, and they're going to get a lot harder. And you may think, well, I won't ever see the hard times. So you're going to see the hard times unless you live in a cushiony, a cushiony life. Uh, but even in the day of wrath, wealth is worthless. Worthless. Um, yeah. That's okay. That is, um, it's fine, you all. I think I've done, I've done talk too much. I have. And, um. Probably going to be getting off of here. I'm done talking. Um, if you go to the store, pick up some salt. Pick up one canister of salt. If you go to Walmart, you can get it to us for maybe 50 some odd cents or the Dollar Tree or something. You can get you some salt. That way you at least have some salt for something you want. And it has many benefits. You could even gargle salt water if you have a sore throat and for your wounds and stuff like that. Um, all of that. That's right, you all. All of that salt you can you can you can manage salt and that will be your first start for some who may not have nothing stored up you'll have some salt that's right and they say that here's what happens when there's an area this is what has really happened when the when the um not to get into this but when the papacy or whatever when they go build their big new areas and stuff they would literally burn down that area whatever was setting on it then they would literally salt the earth salt it to keep away any energy any spirits uh, that were there they salt the ground burn it and salt it and that's another use of for salt you all you've heard like throw salt over your shoulders or sprinkle salt around and things like that yeah you, you might want to have some salt too so i'm gonna go you all and um, with that being said hello wherever you are in any part of the world hello from my heart to yours, love you. Have a wonderful rest of your day, you all. Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, um, please subscribe. I don't have a membership. I don't have a Patreon. I don't have nothing. I don't. That's okay, you all. Um, it is quite all right, you all. Thank you, Apple Brooks, honey, and Susan, honey. You all, thank you so much. Have a wonderful afternoon, and I am um, morning. I hope to see you all later today. I have no idea what I'll share, but um, hope to see you later regardless. Love you.